Hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers for allowing me to speak on one of my favorite topics, the genetics of Turner syndrome aortopathy. For those of you who don't um, think about Turner syndrome every day, just a reminder that this is a condition that is due to the complete or partial loss of the second sex chromosome, sometimes referred to as monosomy X. It's a rare disorder. It occurs in about one in 2,000 live female births, but it's actually quite common in utero with uh, about one in 2,000 hundred female conceptuses affected. There's a constellation of phenotypes, including short stature, premature ovarian failure, um, broad chest, some cognitive disorders, web neck lymphedema. But what we're going to focus on today is the high incidence of congenital heart defects in Turner syndrome, in particular bicuspid aortic valve and aortic disease, including coarctation of the aorta and um, aortic dissection um, due to um, dil dilation. In terms of bicuspid aortic valve, it's one of the most common features associated with Turner syndrome. We think of Turner syndrome not as a disease in and of itself, but as a condition that predisposes individuals with Turner syndrome to have a wide variety of diseases, including um, bicuspid aortic valve, but at a very highly um, increased incidence. So about 25 to 30% of individuals with Turner syndrome have a bicuspid aortic valve. And that's uh, illustrated here by this graphic showing that in the euploid population, about two to three percent of euploid males have a uh, bicuspid aortic valve, but only about 0.5 percent of um, females have a BAV as opposed to this 25 to 30 percent in Turner syndrome. So highly increased risk, but the fact that bicuspid aortic valve is um, at higher incidence in euploid males and in Turner syndrome suggests that having a second X chromosome um, is protective against developing bicuspid valve and its associated aortopathy. Um, in terms of aortic disease, about 95% of Turner syndrome patients with an aortic dissection have a bicuspid aortic valve. So there's a strong association between the congenital defect and the later onset aortopathy. We think about Turner syndrome um, aerotopathy using this um, theoretical threshold model of disease where there is um, indicated by the horizontal line a threshold um, which one has to go past in order to manifest the BAV and aerotopathy. And as you can see on the far left, um, males, the um, sex chromosome genetic factors in black um, affect males, but not females. And in Turner syndrome, um, which is indicated um, with the black um, bar only, that it's the loss of the second sex chromosome that is the major driving factor towards BAV and aortopathy. But in a, it's, a, it's not sufficient to um, go past the disease threshold. It will take additional factors, and those are the unknowns and things that we're interested in pursuing. Suing, and those can be genetic factors or other things that um, increase the risk to the point where there is aerotopathy and BAV. Um, as I said before, the Turner syndrome is the result of a complete or partial loss of a second sex chromosome. About 50% of those individuals with Turner syndrome have a complete monosomy X. 30% or so have a partial deletion or rearrangement as shown here to the most common being um, uh, ISO XQ or a ring chromosome, but there are also deletions of either the short or long arm that are associated with Turner syndrome. About 20% are mosaic for a second X chromosome. And so you would have perhaps cells with a 45 X, but also cells with a 46 XX component. And a small percentage have some Y chromosome material indicating that they in, started out being 46XY, lost much of the Y, um, it resulting in a domination of monosomy X. This is important because using this differential karyotype between individuals with Turner syndrome can be very informative as to the genetics associated with the various traits. And this was shown by um, uh, Carolyn Bondi in her lab in 2013, where they did a study where they looked at deletion of XP as one of the karyotypes for Turner syndrome and determined that it was associated with bicuspid aortic valve and thoracic aortic aneurysms and disease and aortic disease. And so that was one of the first indications that you could in fact use differential chromosome analysis um, to detect areas at least of the chromosome that were important in either protection or conferring risk for having BAV and aortic disease. 
we took a different approach in my lab um, where we took a whole exome wide association approach. And so we, um, from the GenTAC um, Turner syndrome cohort as um, collected now in BioLink, we did uh, an analysis of individuals with Turner syndrome who either had a bicuspid aortic valve and aortic disease or no um, detectable cardiovascular disease, did whole exome sequencing and did what's called a SCADO analysis, a sequence kernel association test. And the results are shown here where the green horizontal line is the threshold for exome wide significance. And you can see that a single gene in the scatter pot arose above that um, exome wide significant um, threshold. And that is the gene TIMP3. And so this indicated to us that variants in TIMP3 were associated with BAV and increased aortic root Z scores in this particular analysis. We determined that those um, SNPs actually were two linked SNPs um, in TIMP3, as shown here, histidine 83 and serine 87. And these are functional SNPs. Um, they are found at um, fairly high frequency in the general population, not associated with disease, which means that in the general population, they tend to be polymorphic or um, even though they're functional, they're not disease associated. But it's been shown that they disrupt several transcription factor binding sites, and they're associated with reduced level of TIMP3 in plasma, and so it lowers expression of TIMP3. We also showed that, um, that these SNPs acted um, independently but synergistically to reduce the function. We also noted that TIMP3, which is on chromosome 22, is functionally related with TIMP1, which is on the X chromosome, which really caught our attention as being an important component because we know that there are factors on the X chromosome that predispose to um, having BAV and aortopathy and Turner syndrome. And so we proposed that TIMP1 and TIMP3, since they both control the same set of matrix metalloproteinases, including MMPs 2 and 9, which we know are important in thoracic aortic disease, that perhaps it was um, the relationship and in fact the um, interaction between these two um, genes that was important in BAV and aerotopathy and Turner syndrome. And so we first showed that TIMP1 copy number alone in Turner syndrome is associated with BAV. On the left, you can see that if you have only one copy of TIMP1, that you are more likely to have a bicuspid or valve than not. Um, and if you are one of these individuals who is either mosaic or has um, only partial deletion of the second sex chromosome so that you have more than one copy of TIMP1, that you are likely, more likely to not have a BAV um, compared to the, the one copy. And that was an odds ratio of uh, four. And so having a single copy of TIMP1 increases the likelihood of BAV about fourfold. We then looked at the um, synergy between having the TIMP3 variants and one copy of TIMP1 and showed that it significantly increases the um, risk of having a, um, aortopathy and um, in terms of both bicuspid aortic valve and aortic disease as shown here um, with about a 13 fold increased risk. So we propose using our threshold model that it's the combinatorial effect of risk alleles in TIMP3 and one copy of TIMP1 that synergistically increases the risk of aortopathy and Turner syndrome. And beyond Turner syndrome, the lack of a second copy of TIMP1 in euploid males may also explain the increased risk for aortopathy compared to euploid females. And so to conclude this part, we say that variants in TIMP3 are associated with bicuspid valve and aortic enlargement in Turner syndrome. TIMP1 is the X chromosome sensitizing factor for bicuspid aortic valve and Turner syndrome. And the inherent reductions in TIMP1 and TIMP3 expression increase risk for BAV. TIMP1 deficiency coupled with reduced TIMP3 expression sensitizes the aortic wall. Um, so beyond bicuspid aortic valve, looking at the downstream aerotopathy. Um, but this only accounts for about 20% of BAV uh, and um, aortic disease in Turner syndrome because that's about the rate at which these um, uh, uh, TIMP3 variants are inherited. So there must be more going on. And so there are other potential contributions. There, um, uh, Siddharth Prakash and um, 
a group of us showed um, that gene duplications um, due to um, copy number variants on chromosome 12, um, in particular the genes SLC2A3, SLC2A4, and nanoGP1 were significantly associated with bicuspidary valve coarctation and dissection. And so I think that this um, copy number variant is also a considerable um, risk factor for um, these disorders in Turner syndrome. In addition, we are doing studies in my laboratory looking at epigenetic contributions to Turner syndrome and have preliminary data showing that dysregulation of notch one pathway genes and TIMP1 are involved. Um, perhaps in another route or mechanism to what is turning out to be genetically heterogeneous occurrence of bicuspid aortic valve and aortopathy in Turner syndrome. So I'd just like to acknowledge my um, collaborators in um, particular the Turner Center study subjects and their families who have been very generous with their time and samples, um, the Turner Syndrome Society of the U.S., which has also been very generous with their resources for us, Michael Silberbach, Holly Corbett, and others in my lab, and um, Gentech, of course, and NHLBI for their support. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to talking with you at the live session.